So the next morning we get back out there. It's a great area. It's one of the best areas in the entire concession, quite frankly. It consistently has goats. And sure enough, as soon as we get there, we started seeing nannies and kids. See a Billy come out. This looks like he's sitting on his butt. So we look up at this long wash, and sure enough, that's where they're hanging out. Two yellow billies, real dirty. Bottom, that's a, that's a damn good goat. Just have about a 4,000 foot leap. And you're thinking, all right, by the time we get up there, it's gonna be two, three hours later. Where are they gonna be in two or three hours? All this stuff is kind of running through your mind, but at the end of the day, you gotta commit at some point, and you have to commit early enough to make sure you have enough time to get up there. Up and over, huh? Shall we? Let's do it. When you're on the bottom of a mountain and you look up and you see a billy goat all the way at the top of the slope, you just look at it and you go, it might as well be on the moon. It just gives you that sense of, oh my God, how would I possibly get up there? And all you have to do is take one step at a time. It's sort of like that expression of eating an elephant. You do it one bite at a time, just like you hunt a mountain goat one step at a time. And don't keep looking at how far you have to go. Look down and say, that's how far I've come. All right, almost to the top of the Matterhorn. Check right. it off the bucket list. Yeah, <laughs> close. Do you have to be in good shape to hunt a goat? Absolutely, you have to be in good shape to hunt a goat. But you have to be tough mentally as well. That's really the key as much as anything else. When you get to the top of the mountain, you miss a shot or you blow a stalk, whatever happens, you know you're gonna have to get back down and you're gonna have to come back up. And you have to do it as many times as it takes to get up there and you have to mentally know, I'm gonna do what it takes to get this goat. We crested the summit only to find that, once again, our goat had disappeared in the snowy crags of British Columbia. My own personal Groundhog Day continues, making me wonder if this epic journey will ever have a payoff. So we sat there, sat there, just dejected. We had just made this enormous climb, the second one, and uh, you're so committed at that point, that sensation of, my God, how many of these do I have in me? That just sucks. There's no other way to put it. That's tough. That's a tough one to swallow right there. You march down off the mountain again for the second time without a goat. I mean, it's a feeling of dejection, of frustration. Yet at the end of the day, if you finally get that goat, you know it's going to be the most memorable trophy you've got. Yeah, it's going to make him just that much more memorable when we finally get him. So we get back from just the longest day of my life, quite frankly. Tim Ferriss, the outfitter, just says, hey, look, I spotted two beautiful billies. They're up high, but they're not moving. They're staying right up there. They're not in the rut right now. They shouldn't be moving around much. I think we can bank on them being there tomorrow. So at least I went to bed with some optimism, some hope that this saga is going to eventually end. Goat hunting is about pushing yourself harder than you ever thought possible, about keeping the faith even after multiple fruitless climbs to the top of the peaks when you just didn't think you had one more climb in you. So we got two billies and a nanny, really long nanny. Can't really tell for sure on the billies. They look, they look good. And then there's a, another nanny and a kid that just came out as well. They're all working their way up this long, steep draw. That's a damn good goat. A long ways away, but we figured we could do her. I bet you that bottom left one's a 10, 10 plus inch goal. So they're both heavy there. Yeah. yeah. So, well, let's get some stuff ready, I guess. So we start climbing once again, one step at a time, just take it one step at a time. And we get through little rivers, we're just busting hump, getting through the snow. And we worked and we worked. We looked back and just took rests and took it easy. And the good news was the goats were in no hurry to go anywhere. Tiptoeing through, just using all fours basically to make sure we can get up there. And keep going and keep going. I, even I was getting pretty tired there. I mean, I was starting to power out, but looking back and seeing everyone working hard kind of gave me the motivation to keep on busting my butt here for these guys. And, and you just keep going, you just keep going one step, one step, and you keep telling yourself, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna get there, you're gonna get up there, he's gonna be there. You just have to be optimistic when you're a goat hunter. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're just up above us here, so you guys just stay here and I'll, 
back in two seconds, okay? Peeked up over the, the ridge there. I looked down to my left and about maybe 60, 70 yards away, here's these two goats bedded there. And <gasps> oh, I'm thinking, oh man, I gotta get these guys up here right now. Yeah, they're right there. Right there. This is it. If it doesn't happen on this particular stock, the 20 year quest continues because it isn't gonna happen here this time. Getting within rifle range of a beautiful billy after so many failed attempts seemed surreal. Now what, I thought, I've never gotten to this level in the game. All this is kind of running through my mind as I'm kind of getting the rifle ready, just chambering around, getting ready to ease up over the crest. There, at 80 yards, was sitting the pot of gold at the end of my rainbow spanning 20 years. Which one, which one? Yeah, Chris asked, which one should I shoot? And I said, I don't care. Whichever one stands up first kind of thing. And sure enough, the big guy stands up first. Here we go. Shoot him again, he's going for cliffs. Shoot. And that was, hallelujah, one of the greatest experiences of my hunting life. We got right him. on. He's right there, man. Still moving a little bit. Still moving a little bit. Just. God, he's not going anywhere. He's got two broken shoulders. <sighs> Woo! We got him, man. Good he job, him. buddy. Good <laughs> job. It was relief. It was elation. You know, I may need therapy after this, but it was just a fantastic, epic hunt. 20 years in the making, we've got a dead goat right down there. This is the third trip to BC to get a goat, and I finally got it done. And by God, this is about the last hike I had in me, too. That's the first one right there. Never have another first one. No, that's for sure. I have a feeling that's my last one, too. <laughs> Don't look down. Congratulations. Thanks, bud. Did her. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, look at that. I haven't looked at a lot of these up close, but he looks like a toad to me. Look at that coat, Man. too. That's nine inches right there. So he's 10, 11, huh? He's, he's 10 and a half for sure, I bet you. Oh, man. Look at that. The biggest goat I've ever been on right here. Really? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I've been doing this for five, six man. years Holy now, so that's saying something. Oh. Hey, if you're going to climb to the mountain, you might as well take a big one, huh? What do you think? <laughs> I think that's a good model right there. Anywhere that's a big goat. It's just an absolute tank of a billy. Yeah, he killed uh, above average goat by for sure. When you're talking Boone and Crockett, I mean, I most certainly don't push Boone and Crockett goats, but uh, I'm happy to take one whenever we can, believe me. <laughs> Congratulations, How man. About it, huh? What a fantastic. Oh. I tell you, this is why you hunt them such late season. It's, it's tough, it's treacherous in the snow, but look at this coat. I mean, just beautiful. No. How sweet is that? What a trophy. What an absolute, the hunt is a trophy, the animal's a trophy. Share it with you as a trophy, pal. Take such a magnificent beast, one for the record books and one for the memory banks, and you're forever bound to this mountain and to the people who made it possible. <laughs>